ambulance service. There's a patient breathing. She's in labour. Every minute of every day, the ambulance service answers our cries for help. From the crews on the ground saving lives. One, two, three. Just keep going. To the staff in control, making the split second decisions on who should get help. I've got another cat one. I hope to God that's not real. <laughs> God, this is crazy. The North East Ambulance Service delivers emergency care for the 2.7 million people of Newcastle and beyond. We're coming as fast as we can. We've got multiple crews travelling. Oh, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to look after you. This is the story of how both the region and the service that cares for them are struggling to bounce back through the most testing times. We are one big ambulance service. One big family. Saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's ours. Welcome to the North East. Please, we need an ambulance with me. She just stabbed herself in the neck, yeah? Oh, I've got you. Squeeze my hand. You can squeeze my hand, all right? You all right? Don't go peaked on in the last 10 minutes. Jesus Christ. I've got a, somebody stabbed herself in the neck. It's a pretty much a busy to be all day, to be honest. It is the beginning of the night shift for dispatcher Jordan. I'm in. He and the rest of the team caring for the people of the North East are inheriting a busy day shift. This is a group broadcast, group broadcast for a cat one call in Brandon. That's a C1 in Brandon. Hems is good at that one. Yeah, OK, right. No Thank you. I do have to let you know that we are under high demand this evening. We have had wait times of up to 90 minutes. Thank you. Can someone get the police for that, that, that stabbing? The what, Bishop 123's job, no one's got the police. Hello, it's the ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? Oh, I'm just following the spine of my chest. I see the dog on my stomach. And I've got a one with two dogs trying to keep them in. Right, update from DMH at the moment. Uh, two hours 20 for the longest way to hand over. Six crews currently queuing. The minus six nurses. So they're literally down to the bare bones for nursing staff to take any handovers. And the thing, it's going to be right the way through the night. Staff shortages at Darlington Hospital have caused ambulance crews to wait up to two hours to get back on the road. And Control are receiving a new call every 22 seconds. Dear me, what a start. I've had stabbings, I've had flipping God knows what. I feel like him off Benidorm, who's got the sunbed shops. I'm sweating. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? He was unconscious and then he come round. Yeah. He's very white. What's the postcode of where you are? It's Italian restaurant. So okay. we do have severe demand on the service at this moment, but we will get to you just as soon as we possibly can. It's been one of those nights. Oh, no, but you I do... Well, I've just, just checked, and it's, it's, it's nearly a full moon. And it's Paddy's Day on Thursday, so it's going to be absolutely disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. <laughs> I need it for. Do I care? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Women fought. It's, it's so, la so ladylike. Just cleared from a job in heaven are paramedic Ellen and emergency care assistant Alan. Three, three, one. So are you receiving over? Go ahead, over. This one's actually in a restaurant, uh, so you might score for some some leftover food. And um, we're going to an eighty-three-year-old. He has had a bit of a funny turn. His daughter's rang it in, so I think she's done seen with him over. Yeah, it's all received. We'll go check it out. Thank you. Anything coming? No, you're absolutely fine. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so realistic. Didn't it? It did. Mint. This yeah. is in Fullwell. Southern area. Yeah, in a restaurant. How old is he? 83. Bless him. Huh. Full entourage, yeah. Yes, Due to the high demand on the service, the patient has been kept waiting for almost an hour. Hello, Brian. My name's Ellen and this is Hi, Alan. Brian. So tell me what's happened today then. Is it the bill that's done this, Brian? No. <laughs> no. 
Could be, mate. Could be. It just went a ghastly colour. He just... just went unresponsive and then he come round a little bit and then he just went yeah. again and we just had to get him straight down onto the floor. OK. So what did you say, your normal, um... No, your normal blood, <laughs> your normal blood pressure, Brian. No blood pressure? Well, it's good. It's going to pop this up and down like you or you. Right. It's a little bit on the low side today for you. It's 125 over 64. Right? Is it? Yeah. It's, so it's down. So it's a little bit low for you at the minute. Oh, that's what it is. Aye. What I want to do is sit you up and see if it drastically changes. Yeah. Um, if it does, then we'll just have to go from there and sort of figure it out. Right. Yeah? So, are you feeling all right if we can just yes, sit you up nice right. and yeah. slowly? Nice slowly and slowly. Bragging. OK. There we are. Right. <coughs> Settle yourself there. Nice and relaxed. How do you feel there? Okay. So what did you have for food then? What did you have for your meal? Chicken. What did I have? Chicken. 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 Oh, it sounds nice. Chicken finishes. Lovely, it's come up, sweetheart. One, three, six, over seventy-five. Good. Spot on. Are you happy to go to hospital yeah, with us? Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's caused the episodes today, um, and especially with your past medical history, you need to get checked out, right. and you need some bloods doing. All right. right. You ready? On. That's it. Well done, I lad. Just, okay, the bed's just behind you, nice Brian. And, nice and steady. All There's right, no take rush. your time. Keep hold of my hand. You all right? <laughs> your legs are uh, gone, yeah. you know. Yeah. There we are. Good lad. Yeah. Right, we're going to strap you in, cos Alan's a bit of a dodgy driver. <laughs> all right, I'll see you later, Brian. See you later. See you later. Push it. I'm trying. <laughs> Oh, no. Don't be daft. No, don't be. <sighs> Are all those people in there your family? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's quite a few of them, mind, isn't oh, there? It's, 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 it's the wife's visiting all the home. I put her in all. Oh, really? This is, uh, I looked at her for, for five years. Yeah. And I've, I've my condition that... Anyway, she fell down... She fell down the stairs about six weeks ago. Yeah. Brought her arm. Oh, During dear. the night. And she had Alzheimer's, you know, so it's... Oh, bless you. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too torture. much, isn't it? It's too much It was sometimes. torture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I poor thing, she's... Oh, it's terrible. Terrible disease, that. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought I was going to get like it. Oh, yeah. I'll just finish it off me. I'll, I'll do it. Oh. I always get myself a bottle of whiskey, that's it. Say it to everybody. Awful disease, that. It is. My nana so. had it, so I've got a know, I know what it's like. I know. Oh, Done your best, though, sweetheart. Do you well, know what I mean? I mean, I promise. Oh, too, I don't know. Well, you have. You have. And you still do. What's your wife's name, Brian? Philomena. Ina. 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 Philomena. That's lovely, a lovely name. Philomena. Ina. Do you see her often? Do you go and see her? Oh, every day, I Every know. day. Caring for your spouse, your other half, especially couples who have been together for 60, 70, 80 years. It's so difficult. We'll get some bloods done. Hopefully they'll come back fairly quickly, yeah, OK? Hopefully. And if now's the bother, then they'll send you on your way. Well. All right. Because they're not them anymore. So it's like caring for a completely different person that you've never met, but you still love them. I grew up with it because my yeah. my nana she was uh, she was early onset like thirties forties oh, yeah and you just see that person just vanish it was awful. awful like it's the worst thing ever I remember last time going and seeing her 
and she didn't know who I was. And I walked in, I was like, hi, Nana, I was only young. And she just went, who, who's this? And my, I, like, my heart just broke in two. Uh, my heart it just is broke. Awkward, like, isn't it? I just, I, I just didn't ever go back and see her after that. I just couldn't. Yeah, it completely broke us in two. Joining the shift at Darlington tonight are paramedic Vanessa and clinical care assistant Kaylee. Right, ready for another night, V? Another night, another dollar. <laughs> oh, look who I've brought with us. Angus. Angus, the milk cow. Also on duty are paramedic Becca and clinical care assistant Chris. You got a little mascot. Little mascot for the week. Who's is that? Yours? No, it's not. No, I've got a Chris got me because he, he hates me whinging that I'm cold. <laughs> so he solved the problem. That's cute. Bye, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ate all them sweets? No! You crazy cow. There's loads left. You have the rest. <laughs> that means you've ate them all. <laughs> Look, I'm just a generous giving person. I'm in a tip. For decent breathing. <laughs> I'm struggling in the morning. You, what are you struggling with? I'm struggling. You're breathing. <laughs> Starting three to eight. You're off to Woodland Road, please, for a 27 to 7 year old female. This female has a regular call to ourselves. Uh, she's ringing, complaining of uh, breathing difficulties. Uh, she's from the, the um, Hartlepool area. What's she doing over here? If you need anything, no, just give us a shout over. Thank you. Do you know where? Mm, I've never heard of her. She's a regular caller. But she's metres away. Mm, I know. So she's opposite the church. Where's the church she yours? Is she there? She is. She's, she's on the floor. Wow. Kelly? My name's Kelly. What's happened? I'm choking to death on the phone. You're choking to death? Right, Kelly, listen to me. Can you look at me? Get you on the back of the ambulance and we'll have a little talk in there, OK? Hiya, Kelly. I'm Vanessa. My lungs are killing me. Your lungs are killing you. Just try and just slow down where you're breathing. Where were you heading? Were you heading for the hospital? Don't tell them. Oh. Right, watch yourself. Right, I'll in go here. first. I'll go first. That's it. I've got a head injury. I know, we can see. We'll have a little chat. Right, you lay on this bed. That's it. All right. Right. Put your feet up there, Kelly. So we'll start with the breathing difficulties first, and we'll we'll go on. So what what's happening right now? Just so nervous, it's just choking me to death. What's choking you to death? Oh, the phlegm in my lungs. The phlegm in your lungs. Is that your blood? Is it? Yeah. So how have you done that? Brush my head. On what? On what? Oh, I can't remember. Are you, have you been drinking tonight or have you taken anything tonight? Oh, Drop no. of blood out your finger. Only yesterday I was drinking. Who do you live with? Actually, you live alone. Supported Are you living supported living, do you? So where were you staying tonight? I was supposed to be staying up with friends. How old are you? Just from 27 on the 1st of last week. 27? You look a lot younger than 27. <laughs> Chest nice and clear. Vanessa says your chest sounds lovely and clear. Your saturation levels are really good. Your blood pressure's perfect and your heart rate's good. So, so far, everything that we're doing, it's coming back normal. All right. Normally, with chest pain, we do take to the hospital to rule anything out. And then, if that's OK, they'll probably be able to go home. Oh! oh. <laughs> She's a terrible driver, isn't she? She stalled it about ten times already. Kelly is taken to Darlington Hospital, a three-minute drive away. How long have you lived up here for? Eight years. Eight years? Did you move up here by yourself? Well, I was fussed. OK.
Here she is, Queen V with a chair. So, Kelly, I've, I've just had a word with one of the nurses there, and they reckon that you've just absconded from the hospital. You were sat in the waiting room with a head injury. Is that right? So have you just walked out without being seen? That would make sense as to why you were on yeah. the floor near the hospital. So. Listen, okay. you, you can tell us the truth. We're yeah, not bothered. Yeah, yeah, we're not here to judge or no. anything like that. Yeah? Well, what made you walk out? I was very Shall we go back in? Because I think you're still on the system, they said. So go back in. Go back in the waiting room. And then room. if you wait in the waiting room, you get checked out and then you can get a proper MOT then, can't you? We don't want you walking around the streets on your own at 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, do we? So wait to be seen and then when, she, when you do actually get discharged, explain to them where you need to go. Yeah. And if you need to get a taxi somewhere, get a taxi, but please don't abscond again. It's not safe for you to be walking around at this time of the night. Because we'll go like that. Yeah. yeah. OK? Promises, please. Yeah. Right. Come on. It was lovely to meet you. Yeah, you take care, Kelly. But we don't want to see you again tonight on the side of the road. Apparently, according to um, the doc in, in, inside the hospital there, she's had 400 attendances in three years. Wow. In In North Tees and James Cook alone. That's, that is absolutely so going. Yeah. Darling, starting the queue again. We're getting hammered tonight. I know. But we knew this was going to happen after one o'clock, didn't we? My worry is now if Darling's going to start the queue when we start getting jobs in Darling, they're going to start backing up. Yep. We've called. We just don't know how long the ambulance would be. The guy's using up. So you already have it. You've already called for an ambulance. Yes, we have. Yeah. Across the northeast, there are currently 47 patients waiting for an ambulance. He's had a crack pipe and uh, he's just had an heart attack. I've got a medical position on the floor and uh, he's just deteriorating faster. I'm calling about my wife. She has a um, continuous feeling of nausea, pain towards the left shoulder. She's really done a very good way, to be honest. Starting 332, you're off to Kirk Merrington for a 64 year old female. Called in by your husband due to nausea and pain in the top of the back towards the left shoulder. Red beta. Right, let's go and save Doreen's life. God's sake, man. Doreen and Kirk Merrington, back to Durham. With demand remaining high across the region, the nearest crew, Becca and Chris, are over 20 minutes away. We just get sent everywhere. Everywhere. But the issue with that is, you get sent out of area, then they just guaranteed to be a serious job in this area. So then they drag someone from another area to come and cover that area, this, the cat one in this area. OK, yeah. Oh, I'll be that one with the light on a bit. Can you get up there? Is that on the wall? I can get up there. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. I'm Becca. This is Chris. Oh, so God what's been happening then, Doreen? It feels like I've got a golf ball in my back. Mm hmm At the top of my shoulders. Like, is it sort of like in between your shoulder blades, would you say? Yes. And here. And it's... Honestly, it's mm -hmm. just... Niggling away. Doreen, can I do some checks on you? You can do anything you like, lovely. With hair like that. With hair like that. It's like Prince Charming, isn't he? Oh, oh, Sorry, I'm going to come and sit next to you because I'm a new favourite patient. <laughs> we need to 
you get you away from him? Your husband stood next to us. Oh, it doesn't matter about him. He's an old country. Well, your blood pressure is up a little bit. Is it really? Well, Just a little bit. And your heart rate's up a little bit as well. It's coming down a bit now. That's maybe because you've took your hand off my leg. <laughs> so it's coming down a bit now. Excuse me. So it wasn't 100. It wasn't 100. It wasn't 100. It wasn't 126, and this came down to 110, but it's creeping up now again. Can I have a feel? Is it just about? It's about there, yeah. It's about, it's about there. Yeah, and that was sharp, wasn't and... it? Have you spoken to the GP about this pain before? Oh, I'm so frightened to go to the doctors because they'll send me to hospital again. You're not a fan of hospitals, then, I see. Mm -hmm. No, who is? Well, to be fair, some people like hospital, but. Um... I've been so. Oh, what's the matter? Mm. I'm myself going because why? I don't want to go to hospital. No one's going to force, you to, force you to go no to hospital. No one's going to force you to go to hospital, <sighs> Doreen. Just... We just need to do what's right for you, don't we? I worry constantly. I, I feel like I just want to throw up constantly because of the COVID mm. carry on, and that's what's making me think. I can't go well, into hospital. There's not that many COVID cases in hospital. Oh, I know that. Would you like us to leave you for no, five? No, no, just for five minutes. Take me five minutes and let you have a, let you have a discussion with your husband. Just take. And see, me. you want to come with us? It's really, it's really. I don't think it's a no-brainer. Where are we going on our first date? Uh, oh, try burn off the lovely. That's your mind. Do you know what it is? <laughs> they, do, they do a lovely bacon sandwich, you know. Oh God, I could kill for a bacon sandwich. Right. Oh, yeah. I think you'll be pretty, you know. Oh, I'll give you. Only about nine and a half stone. Do you want to find a fireman's lift? <laughs> right. I'll have a sit on here. Would you like anything for the pain, Doreen? And give you some liquid morphine if you like. Get the good stuff. Right. See you there. He's only going to be in the front. <laughs> Doreen will be seen by doctors in A&E for further tests. So far tonight, Northeast Ambulance Service have already treated 149 patients. What was that, Judith? Jordan, I don't even know what that was. Ooh, and I can breathe. Darling, you're 332. I'm just asking. Do it on this deal if you've got one. Yeah, the, um, Doreen was lovely. Um, I think I found a new girlfriend. Uh, I'm going to go and pick her up. We're going to go on a second date later on. We're going to go for a bacon sarnie, I think. Are you going to go to Craig's or something? I'm a little bit more upmarket. Well, to be fair, she told us Dry Burn Hospital will do, so, you know, I'm quids in, I'll get, I'll get staff discount. Oh, champion, what a cheap day. Get in. Nice one, Doreen. Thank you. And it's pulled. Who's Chris, pulled? Chris has pulled. Where are they going for their date? UHND canteen. All right, OK. Yeah. Do you good gammon and chips there? Why, they do. If you're on death row, right? Uh-huh. And you're getting a lethal injection tomorrow? Uh-huh. What will be your final meal? Oh, God. Oh, God. My main course. It'll be a mixed grill. OK. Gammon, steak, lamb chop, pork chop, chips, black pudding, onion rings. I'd probably go for a prawn cocktail. Oh, interesting. Good choice. I'd have a fillet steak, mm -hmm. rare. Two slices of a bread and butter, tomato sauce, and garlic mushrooms, like, cos no one's going to smell my breath other than I'm going to be dead. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? If this is you know, UK, you have an emergency SMS message saying ambulance and then they said ambulance suicide. The call in progress is from a texting service that allows hard of hearing and speech impaired patients to alert 999. Then a new message, police help. Then a new message, bomb. And a new message, bomb to end my life. Will you get this police? Mentioned bomb multiple times, yeah. It's a text, really. Hello, it's Chris. Supervisor Chris and team leader Claire will lead the response. Can I activate you to a job across a Middlesbrough? Potentially suicidal, threatening to kill someone he's mentioned bomb multiple times. Well, I've won light. He's on light, mate, I. Yeah, I do an RVP at James Cook Hospital. Sure. Cheers, Bartow. Claire, I've activated the CCM just to try and get a bit of a heads up with police. And we're going to need fire as well. We've got a hospital literally next door. 
which we need to take into consideration. He's going to get a right shot when everybody rocks up, and he bomb team, everything. Clinical care manager Mickey is dispatched from Darlington Hospital, along with an ambulance from Redcar to rendezvous with the other emergency services who can ensure their safety. Can we ask him, can he communicate via phone rather than text relay? Can, can we at least uh, try to establish if we were to call him, is he able to speak to us? Would you send a message and just say, um, is, am, I, am, am I able to call him from the ambulance service and speak to him on the phone? Am I able to call you to speak to you on the phone? That message has been sent. It's waiting for a response. No, two incapable can't speak. You said no, two incapable can't speak. No, he says he's too incapable. For, for what reason? Is it a medical reason? Why is he incapable? If he's got a bomb and that goes off, it's catastrophic. The decisions we make at work are critical. It's a little bit like chess, making your moves, making your decisions. Claire, try and get the patient to come out to the main street, and that kind of, like, takes a house risk out of it. Is he able to open a window or even to communicate with the crew outside? So can we send a message back just saying that obviously we can help him, but he needs to come outside? Just type in now. Ring bell and staff come down and turn alarm off. Ring bell and staff will come down. Department has mentioned something about some staff being there. He's on about staff being there now. You know what it is, where this is mapping, it's the street next to Rosemary Park Hospital. Give us a couple of minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and obviously uh, have a look at this right now. Just try. It's saying it's okay at home. I'll give it a ring. Oh hiya, it's uh, just Hamlin's control room here. Um, we've had a, a 999 phone call. I'm just wondering, is he one of your residents? Yeah, yeah, he's downstairs in bed. Right, well, we've, had, we've had a 999 call that he's uh, having a, a suicidal and, and threatening to kill and uh, having a mental health breakdown. Uh, no, but no bother at all. Sorry to wake you up. Cheers, thanks. Bye. Claire? It's a hoax for the bomb side of things. So the carers just went down and let the crew in, like, Having established that the patient is texting from a place of safety, Chris can allow his crew to address the patient's mental health crisis. Hi, uh, Joanna, that was a case of thinking the worst, wasn't it, and scaling out for that there? Like... You have to, though. Because if you don't, and something happens, it's our fault. Nobody well, that'll else's. be the one where you just sing, he's not going to have a bomb. <laughs> I've suffered from mental health problems myself, and the hardest part is admitting you need help. There's a reason they're ringing us. But you kind of get angry at it because that person may not possibly know what they're doing. I think that lesson is, is if you need help, that helps there and they take it. Well, there was no bomb, so they took the phone off him and he's going to get a psychiatric assessment tomorrow. Oh, OK. I'm just ready for me bed now. I've had a very busy night and I <laughs> It's been very bizarre. It has a very busy, bizarre night. <sighs> Morning, Sue. Morning. I don't know what was in the water last night, but hey. hospitals, Darlington, was absolute, just a nightmare most of the night. It hasn't been an issue since, but just obviously keep an eye on it today. Traffic's a bit bad going home. Oh, is this? Oh, lovely. Just what you want on a Tuesday morning. Right, see you all later. See you.
It's the start of a new 12-hour night shift for Northeast Ambulance Service. Northeast ambulances are being used on the front line in Ukraine. An NHS team drove a convoy of four of them, delivering two tons of urgently needed medical equipment. And then the ambulances donated by the Northeast Ambulance Service were given to Ukrainian paramedics who put them to use within hours. There's volunteers driving yeah. over from like, the QE in that. How long will that take to drive Ukraine? Should we Google map it? I think that's brave, that like. So I reckon it's going to take 25 hours to get them ambulances there. That's 1,453 miles. Well, you've got to take into consideration the driving. The driving. The ferries. Uh -huh. And all the road works down the yeah. A1, cos that's a nightmare. It is, yeah, right. It's heartbreaking, like, it really is. It is. It's going to end up going on and on and on for years. Yeah. <laughs> I think Putin knows that he's, it's not working out the way he wanted it to do. It's disgraceful. It's disgusting. Absolute melt of a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. And a top of the morning to you. Jordan. <laughs> to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. How's yourself? You know I'm OK. Um, St Patrick's Day. I should be out in the pub, but I'm here. Um, I've actually got a little bit of bad news to tell you to start your shift. Um, can you remember the, the young lady you picked up from um, outside of uh, oh, Darling no, Hospital last please. night? So, today I had a call for her to home address, um, and she was in cardiac arrest. Um, I think she was at home address, and by the looks of it, she has had a fall, which may have contributed to the, the arrest by the looks of things. Uh, we managed to get a ROSC on the patient, and she's now in North Tees. Hopefully, going to make uh, quite a considerable recovery of her. Oh, my God, Jordan, I just can't believe that. that, that that's just unreal. Um, obviously, we did all our checks. Everything come back all right. The ECG was nil acute. Um, yeah, wow. Fingers crossed there for me and Kayleigh. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my God. That's I just, so I just, that's mental, mad. It? it just goes to show expected yeah. unexpected. That is, I, I can't get my head around that. Some of the regulars, for as much as they keep calling and calling and calling, you never know that it's just going to be that one time. So you cannot afford to be cynical. You can't afford to be blase about it. You can't afford to be laid back. You have to keep taking that each time you go to visit, it's your first visit. Yeah, honestly, I can't, I can't, can't get over it. I would be very intrigued to find out what, what caused yeah, that cardiac yeah, arrest. Yeah. She's a young lass, so hopefully she bounces back from it. <laughs> Working tonight from Stanley Station are Vicky and Paige. Stanley 329, good evening, ladies. How are we doing, over? Good evening, Jordan. <laughs> Excited for our night shift together. Oh, I know it feels like I haven't worked with you for ages. Have you given her a birthday present yet? No, she's bloody forgot it. That's a sore <laughs> subject, though, Jordan. My <laughs> <laughs> birthday was two months ago, nearly three. Sorry. I promise, I promise, I promise I'll have it in tomorrow. I'm sick of you. Ambulance services, patient breathing. Yeah, he's having a seizure. Okay, is he epileptic? Is he? Sort of. What's your first thought of? Yeah, he is, but his seizure so, on, not on the ones. Yeah, it's really bad. Right, okay. We've got an emergency ambulance arranged. It's on the highest level of response, all right? So someone will be there as soon as we can. This is a group broadcast for Catmon called Usher Mua. If anyone's available, please probably request speed tanks for base out. 329. Thanks, I'll put them in the downtime from 2139. We've got no one to back her up response up at this uh, C1, over. Yeah, we're literally just about to page you there to see we're happy to attend, over. Thank you. Uh, you're going to a 19, year old male, category one. Sitting now. Uh, the patient's got a history of brain tumours. The rapid response is just in front of you. Uh, they're about two minutes away. Oh, that's all appreciated. Thanks for that. Seizures can be life threatening and trigger a category one response the highest priority. Paige and Vicky are five minutes away from the patient. A rapid response vehicle will arrive on scene ahead of them. Hello. 
we've got some um, drugs up here. So how long has it been fitting for? About, about six minutes. About, uh, probably about uh, eight now, I think. OK. I've just come in just there to, to literally catch him starting to be sick and then he just couldn't speak at all and just staring. Okay. And then he went straight into his seizure, didn't he, Michael? What do you want? Um, if I can have some tape and another pink cannula, please. Just have to have another um, bit of gauze. He had a brain tumour and it was removed about two years ago. OK. But because of the size of it and where it was and the damage that it did to his brain, uh -huh. he, um, he's had two major craniotomy operations. Right. Daniel is given medication to stabilise him enough to be taken to hospital. He was first diagnosed back in 2019. They thought it was depression and anxiety. So then when he was finally rushed into hospital, uh, Durham to start with, he had a scan where they showed this mass in the middle of his brain, where we were told the next day, if we hadn't have got him in when we did, he wouldn't be with us now, we'd have lost him. He goes to college though, this is his final year of his A-levels now. Uh, he wants to go to Newcastle University, so hopefully that'll still happen, but... This is really bad. Though. This is really bad, guys. A second dose of medication is administered to control the seizures. Right, one, two, three. Maybe do with the collar, just to support them while we're getting down. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. With the seizures now under control, Daniel will be taken to the nearest A&E four miles away. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Three, two, nine. Family three, two, nine, go ahead. Yeah, I've got a 19-year-old male, um, five seizures within the last hour and 85 minutes away. Thanks for base help. Is there anything that normally sort of triggers it all? Sometimes stress can trigger things. They were hoping he'd grow out of them. Maybe after six to nine months, maybe it would settle down. But of course, as it stands at the moment, and they've had to change his medication a lot because with him, the higher the dose you go, the more side effects there are. He had dreadful depression, and that was real depression. Uh, couldn't sleep, wasn't eating properly, was sick loads. Um, and then they finally found a slow-release one, which he's on at the moment. Daniel will be monitored by specialist doctors at North Durham Hospital for the next 24 hours. Hello. Hello, uh, my friend's um, throwing up, like... Is she intoxicated? She, uh, yeah, she is really... I'm sorry, but... Oh. Tonight, North East Ambulance Service have so far answered 287 calls, many of them alcohol-related. Is he fallen from a height or anything? Have you just fell off the drugs, Leslie? Yeah. He looks like he's um, broke. He's, oh, his nose is an absolute mess. Yeah. Is this the door person? <laughs> Hello, this is Ambulance Service. What's going on with the gentleman? Is he still conscious or not? He is still conscious, but he's going in and out. He's got a uh, very big gash at the back of his head. Right, OK. Like, just use a dry dresser and a clean cloth, fold into the pad and press firmly directly onto it to try and stop the bleeding. We have got an ambulance arranged. It is a high priority, but we are very busy, so just bear with us, all right? 21 jobs now, Jude. I know. There was three. I've yeah. blinked. I've went for a wee. I've come back to 21 jobs. What can I say? The people of Durham are not behaving themselves They're tonight. They're not? But everyone goes out drinking for some part, especially students as well. The students love it, don't they? 331. He is attending a 21 year old male who is currently vomiting blood in the middle of the road over. Yeah, that's just you, thank you. That's where all the bars are. That's where all the bars are. Yeah. 
Aye, I've been to a few student parties around there, like, and they are, they're absolutely, they're, they're out of control. Yeah. Right, where is it again? So it says, Junction, Portland Terrace. Uh, there's people down here. Look, see these on the street? Uh, here. Hello, where's he at? Right, okay. Do we look like an Uber? Right. Well, please be careful if you do get into a car. Make sure that it is an Uber that you're getting into. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. She says you're really fit. He's called Alan. Hi, are you right? Bye. Bye. <laughs> 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 oh, right, see you later. Yeah, bye. Bye, thank you, Alan. <laughs> 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 what, you know, what can I say? You know, I've, I've still got it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I think... Who's this here? Oh, here. Ah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Is it Connor? Yeah. <coughs> yeah? Right. Connor, can we, um, can we go to the ambulance, Chick? I can't assess you when you're out here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's all, all right. right. Come on. Let's get you out of the corner. God, this is so Mind the steps, mate. <coughs> Come on, on there. Get your butt on there and get your legs up here. So, sorry. what have you had to drink, my love? Um. Uh, three Budweiser, and then I drank some uh, Absolute. Yeah. With some like shitty own brand Coke. Nice. Um, that's it, really. Yeah. Okay. Have you got any pain anywhere? No. No. no I'm gr I'm grand except for the fucking puking. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. I didn't want her to call you because I felt I felt like a muppet. Well. Apparently, your housemates say that you've been vomiting some blood. Yeah, she says that. I do that. I mean, all the colours look the same eventually when yeah. you puke in the dark. But... Yeah, that's true. And you haven't drank anything that wasn't yours and that you didn't know what was going into it? No. No. Not, that I, not that I know of. No. no. Well, everything we've checked out seems to be in order. So it's up to you what you want to do. We can take you to hospital if you want to go and get checked out. No, I don't want to go to hospital. We'll get home. Have have a good glass of water, right? Small sips, all right? Maybe add a little pinch of salt in there. I know it'll be minging, but that'll get it sort of levels back to where it there should be. Way aye. It's a strapping young man. He'll be reet. <laughs> right then, gotta watch these steps when you're walking out. Right, yeah. get home safe. Take care. Hey, the youth of today. I know. That's terrible. The youth of today. <laughs> Hi, Jess. One, one, one. Going in about yourself or someone else? No, it's my daughter. I've been asked to give you a call by the, the camp crisis team because uh, she tried to hang herself tonight. Oh, goodness, OK. So did she actually get anything around her neck at the time? Yeah. That's right. So we would arrange an emergency ambulance for her. Are you happy for us to do that? Yeah, that's fine. OK. Hey, you're off for a 14 year old female who's trying to hang herself. Oh, dear, Jordan, that seems pretty sad, doesn't it? That a 14 year old feels like it's the only way out. Um, she's still a kid, really, isn't she? Yeah, you took the words right off my mouth there. It's so sad that uh, in this world, uh, a 14 year old seems to think that that's the only way out. Too many kids in this world killing themselves these days. I would hate to be a teenager in this day and age. Absolutely hate it. I'm Becca and this is Chris. Oh, what's been happening this morning? What the hell? You tried to hang yourself. How long ago was that? Um, just over an hour. An hour ago. She's come in to me, said that she's got a headache and she feels dizzy. And yeah. uh, I've just said to her, you know, go and take some paracetamol because she's just started on sertraline. Okay. So we've weaned off the other medication, started on this medication. Um, 
and I just assumed it was down to that, and she said, no, she said, it's not going to help, because I tried to hang myself. So you can you think I do Okay. Have you done anything like this before? Uh, self-harm's normal, but I've never tried to do anything mm -hmm. like that. And what's the extent of your self-harm? Is it in your, your wrists and stuff? Well, it's only what I can get to if I'm going to use my wrist. Your wrists? OK. Have you done anything like that tonight? Only a couple. Only a couple. Are the whereabouts on that? Can we have a look? Is this, are this fresh? Is this fresh tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's so clear not to try and stop them from doing really things like that. Yeah. But the more I try and stop them, the more confused I am. Yeah. I feel that obviously we've got the sterile wipes. So do you have someone you can speak to when you're feeling like this? Well, don't talk to anyone. You don't talk to anyone. You just struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I heard. I feel like you need some more help. No. I probably need it, but I just don't see, like, how. There we go. Oh, you've got a nice clean bandage for you. Does that feel OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can pop it down to the hospital and talk to the mental health team down there. I'll probably be fine. Are you able to just bring... Have you got, like, a support worker? Or... I've got the comms. Yeah. The comms number, yeah. yeah. It's OK if I speak to the crisis team. Yeah, yeah and see... See what they can suggest yeah. and stuff. My name's Becca, I'm a paramedic. She feels like she does need some help, but she's not wanting to go to hospital. Um, I just don't know if there's anything you can put in place for her or anyone she can speak to. Um, we spoke to camps. OK. They've said that you can do an assessment later on. Let the day shift to ring yourself. They're going to... Do you want the day shift to ring um, and do an assessment later on today? Or is it, does that sound OK? Yeah. You will speak to them if they need to speak to you. Not as much as I can, you know, but yeah. you need to be open and honest. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you here. Are you going to do it again? Probably not. Probably not. Mm. Mm. I just can't leave you alone, OK? Get yourself some sleep. Start to feel mentally drained or... If you're going to do something that you don't want to do, just tell your mum, OK? Mm -hmm. from you, you know, you've got your phone, you can always ring. Just ring for us. Is that OK? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank See you me. later. No, it's fine. See you later. OK. Bye. As a paramedic, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. I guess we have to know a bit of everything. And mental health is massive. We're their last resort. They ring us because there's nothing else that they feel they can do. It is difficult to go to a patient and then see that they need more than you can offer. But we always try our best to help them. If there is someone in need, we're here. Hi, Curly. I am. This shift's flying, though. True, yeah. It's because uh, you've got good company. Where? Oh, you meant you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, so funny. <laughs> uh. Darlington 328. Dalek the feet away, thank you. Doctor 75 year old male. Fish had an unwitnessed fall. It was quite unsteady on the feet. Has a large lump on the head above the left eye. Uh, it's still oozing with blood. Oh, lovely. That's received, yeah. Thanks very much for that, John. No, thank you. 
people he's going in regardless, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, <laughs> We already know that. But if he's got an, obvi an obvious head injury, then they might just anyway. Yeah, yeah. Vanessa and Kaylee are dispatched to their third patient of the night. He has been waiting over two hours for help. Oh, it's a big bump. Have you seen it? You can see the lump from here. Hello. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm Vanessa. This is Kaylee. How have you done that, Robert? I fell out of bed. You fell out of bed? <laughs> Have you had too many whiskies? I wish I had. Uh, I also do I. I'm going to have it. I tell you what, I am going to have one after this shift with Gailey. <laughs> uh, so you just fell out of bed, did you? Yes. Just rolled over? Just rolled over. Rolled over and the little one said... Roll over. Did you lose consciousness? No. No. Have you got any pain in your head? No. Any headaches? No. Any blurred vision? No. Can you see me? Yes. Robert, can you see your young chick? Yes. Oh, my <laughs> God. Get into hospital now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with your vision. <laughs> Have a look there, Robert. Whoa. It's a cork of that, <laughs> isn't it? So you didn't knock yourself out? No. Just going to put this on for the time being, all right? Yeah. And we'll get you a little bandage. Yes. There you go. We're going to get you on the back of the ambulance, right. Robert, right? Come look up to the ceiling. Do you have family, Robert? Yes. What do you have? A wife? Wife. Uh, I used to have a wife. You used to have a wife. Is she not she with died. us? She died. Oh, bless. How long ago? Um, 12 months. Oh, so quite recently then, eh? Yeah. Try and look up nice and tall. That's it. You're all right. We've got you. We won't, we won't let you fall. <laughs> There you go. All right. Yeah. You all right, Robert? Yeah. Lovely jubbly. Mm -hmm. See you later, Rob. Not yet. I'm going to shut the women up. Hey, hey, hey. You all right? Yeah. Watch your head. There you go. Right, I'm just going to... Are you there? Yeah. Just remove this chair. Uh. What were you doing wondering out of bed at this time of the morning? I was, I was uh, taking a, uh, a, a nap. Yeah? And a bell. Oh, you've got quite an egg on your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's the size of a golf ball. They said it was. Yeah. Is it painful? No. No. Oh, bless you. Because his fall was not witnessed, as a precaution, the patient is taken to Darlington Hospital. Look at that handsome devil in there. <laughs> Did you have any hobbies? Football. Did you used to play football? Yes. Were you a good footballer? Well, I thought I was. Yeah! <laughs> Who do you support? Plymouth, I go. Plymouth? Yeah. Where does that work? How come you support that? I used to live down there. Ah, right. I was in the Navy. You were in the Navy. Where did you go? All over the place. Uh, Singapore, Hong Kong. Oh, wow. You've had quite an eventful life then, eh? Yeah. Do you regret anything, Robert? No. No. So if you had to live your life again, you'd live it exactly yes. the same? Good man. Yeah. I'm proud to be from the North East. I think we're very, very friendly people. I've got all the time in the world for me patients. I'd spend my full 12-hour shift with them if it would make them feel better. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Hey. I can see Serenaded now. I can see it in your smile. If he hasn't got a headache, he has now. Hey. Well, it was nice meeting you. Thank you. All right, and I hope you get sorted. Right. All right. I 
think it's comforting for the communities out there to know that we're there for them, serving them as and when needed, like a comfort blanket. Jordan feet away, go ahead. Hiya, Jordan. Uh, just an update. Do you remember our patient, uh, Kelly? Oh, yes, the one you picked up from outside the, the hospital. Yeah, that's a, um, a bit of sad news, actually. Uh, she's actually uh, passed away. Oh, never. That is absolutely heartbreaking. And we know that she was a regular caller, and it just goes to show it's always that thing of uh, cry wolf. Um, but as in this case, it, it, it's tragic. Unfortunately for this patient, we couldn't help as much as what we probably wanted to. And I hope you two are all right as well. If you need anything, you know where we are. We're always, uh, we'll always be here to help if we can. Yeah, thanks very much, Jordan. Really appreciate that. You're not alone. I'll wait till the end of time. Open your mind. Right, all. Thank you very much. And I shall see you on Monday. Enjoy your weekend off. It's been a roller coaster of a night, hasn't it? Especially survive St. Paddy's Day. I didn't know what to expect. It's been a mixed bag of emotions. Absolutely, yes. Open your mind. Surely the time to oh. be with me. That's oh. what I'm going to do when I get home. I'm, Just... I'm ready. I'm ready. For oh. I'm ready for my bed now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A few bevies this weekend. A few dozen. Back in. A few dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has tough times, you know, we go through ups and downs. Some people's downs are way more dramatic and horrendous than others. And I think it does make you realise not to take anything for granted.